Well, hello there, and good evening, thank you for joining me. I'm FrostPDP, and today we're playing Crusader Kings 2, another attempt at North East. I don't have a name for this campaign yet, but I'm feeling a little inspired by Arumba's attempt to take on Big Blue Blob again, which is kind of like his demon in his game. So I'm going to take on... Uh, I'm going to take on North East. Now, just to remind you all, the requirement, and I'm going to double check this is to take on the kingdom of Mongolia. You have to be in Norse culture and you have to control Mongolia. It's the northeasternmost kingdom on the map. Um, I've always looked at it and I've seen like weird titular is this a thing but uh, because of the way clans work, I think it gets very ambiguous with regards to what Mongolia is. But there is a kingdom of Mongolia. It's over here, and we have to take it. That's our goal. Um, we are playing an Iron Man. It is enabled. Uh, I'm just looking at the map right now. I'm like trying to plan my first moves because the big change since the last time I tried this was coalitions. Um... North Easter Rising. North Easter Rising. No, that's terrible. Um, North Easter Egg. Sure. North Easter Egg. That's what we're going to call this campaign. And uh, so I'm not an expert on threat. Uh, I've thought about making some other game videos, but I haven't yet. Um... All right, I kind of remember what being Norse means. Do I have to put anyone on my council? Not really. What do I want to assign people to do? I want to train troops. Actually, do I want to train troops? Levy size, 15%. Not really great. Raids, 10% yearly. Huh. See, I'm not an expert raider that's one thing I'm really not good at I usually just try to play it through pretty much brute force because you can if you don't have coalitions but without coalitions how am I gonna do this and will raiding even raise threat I see, these are things I should probably look up before I just decide to start playing a game alright I have the right as a pagan to do one subjugation war and I have 1,890, whereas this guy has 1,116. Um, probably has more vassals than me though, and that is a concern. The studio may be long, it may be a little bit of me planning things out aloud, but I want you as the viewer to kind of see what my thought process is, because if you're going to invest some time into a series of watching me play, you should at least know what you're looking at. Right? Um, I also think there's a CB I have that I can use to conquer other people's stuff. I know that sounds ridiculous, but in the context of I don't need a special CB to attack somebody, I don't need to fabricate a claim if they're not in my religion and I can attack them, I think. Alright. So you, making you the petty king. I'm a duke, you're a duke, everyone's a duke duke. This guy is also a duke. So it's not going to get a kingdom title. But I am now curious, because this is why I'm considering this move. Kingdom of Denmark. This is the de jure kingdom of Denmark. That's weird. Clear yourself a king level title. And just secure. I mean, like, you're not going to go after him, obviously. Well, you might. Uh, do I have any chance at. <laughs> 46. That's rich. Mercs! I have no money. It's my income. Shit. Okay. So, Mercs are not a good option. Settle tribe. Changes cultures. It's kind of what I wanted to see. I made a video about buttons they need to add. This is what I want to see in on all 
rulership types and add a fourth one to him. Build a legend because I need prestige badly. Uh, ski. Mm, I mean, do I want to try to go the tech route and just sort of tech my way in? Because 7% bonus is pretty significant when you're talking like 1,000 men, that's 70 men. That's, that's pretty significant savings overall. Okay. Build zeal. Piety. I don't have any provinces that aren't my religion, do I? No, in fact, I control the holy center. And that's why I want to go after him, too. I want to get his holy center. Because I have to reform the religion. Um... Okay. So, yes, build zeal. Do have any children? I do have one. I have good old Ragnar. Now, if I'm not mistaken, you could try this achievement as Denmark, and that's okay, but it's Norse culture, right? And the only reason I chose him is because you know what you kind of have in your successor. You know you have someone who's going to probably get strong and probably get this and probably get that. So it's good to know. That's why I'm going to go for uh, Struggle. My focus, well, first let me pick my ambition. And the other thing is, because I can use this, the subjugation CB outside of the kingdom, I can basically take this land, and then, uh, is there a way to do that? Yeah, so I need to do that. Basically, that's what I need to do. I don't have any allies. I definitely want hunting focus. I almost clicked four by accident. Um, there's no other opening move I want to make. Oh, I own this, don't I? Oh, sweet! I didn't realize I owned this. It's even better. So, I'm going to declare war, I'm going to eat this guy. I'm going to use that to be able to go for the King of Sweden focus, which is going to let me eat a lot of this land relatively easily. Now, I'm going to get threat like a mofo, but, you know, until the coalitions get unbearable, I just have to deal with it and expand as fast as I can, and then I can start burning off threat. So I know I can beat him you know based on troops that I have his vassals I mean he might be good he's also married to my aunt so that's a thing but he's 78 and when he dies my cousin inherits we don't want that So we're going to declare subjugation, CB. Is there anything else I need to do? It's an ambition that I can accomplish relatively quickly. Uh, that's a long focus. That's not going to happen, because that's not how this works. And piety of 500, so there's no ambitions I want to take. I just, I mean, I could negotiate a non-aggression. That would be really nice with you, but... <sighs> Sorry, pal, I just got to kick your ass. Alright, council, my council. I need to go to minor titles, right? Commanders. Herdman. 
I have some room to wiggle with opinion, that's good to know. Svien, you are sadly the best we have. Mm -hmm. That gulp you heard was my expectations of getting my ass beat. Speed 3. I'm re downloading Tribes Ascend. I really like to play it before the end of the day. Nineteen, eighteen ninety four. 1894. Okay. How do I want to do this? Can't raise tribal army. Can't even come close to adopting these things. Found a new kingdom. Ain't happening. None of that's happening for a while. I can call on allies. No, not this miss. I'd actually like to. Might accept. Um. Yeah, I mean, might as well, right? The only reason I'm holding off is because I'm debating whether or not I want to just get my men down there first. So that there's no chance that, like, he picks off my army. I also want to do one thing. I know it's cowardly. I'm not fucking insane. I know what a random number generator does. It generates random numbers. Guess what? I don't feel like losing my character because of that. See, that's why I wanted to wait. Or not, maybe that was a mistake. You know what? I just gotta hit him. I just have to hit him. Hope I win. Hope these guys have the balls to come in and reinforce. Hope I get there before he gets here. That did not happen. But you know what? Then I get to be Defender in Forest. Okay. Now the numbers are really against me. This is not good. And my biggest vassal punked out. Retreat time. Um, I seem to have significant difficulties with him. Skane. Well, this runs over, <laughs> essentially. Uh, so, lesson learned. Don't do that. You know, there are a lot of people that wouldn't post this, but the truth is, I will. And let me tell you why. Number one, it's a lesson of what not to do. I, I think I severely misunderstood how this was going to work. <laughs> I think. Uh, I think what I did... I may have even done it a little deliberately, was to look at this number and compare it to my version of that number. Well, he has all his tribal allies, and they come in pretty hardcore. They bring their whole armies. I uh, did not think to deal with that. So it was a bold move, and it was a failed move. So if you're doing northeast. Don't do this. Oh, and as for that Easter egg. Uh, number one, the Easter Rising conflict was something that happened over in Ireland. It was basically a revolt against the British. I, can I tell you exactly when? Not off the top of my head. I believe it was in the 
1900s, early 1900s. But that's not my area. There's a guy named John D. Ruddy. You can look him up on YouTube, and he's really good at explaining that. Um, and then there's also the fact that, like, yeah, I kind of knew this was going to happen. Like, all right, maybe it would work. Maybe I just was not clear, but I, I've done this before, right? Remember, I got, like, all of this under my control. And... Yeah, it, I just got gavel kind of apart. That's why I stopped that campaign. Uh, I I do have a basic understanding of how this works, so don't flame me too hard. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for joining me. If you want to see me actually undertake this, hit the like and subscribe buttons. Let's see if we can get to like a hundred people. That'd be really awesome. Uh, because I know this would be like in all seriousness a huge undertaking. The Northeast campaign requires you to go from here-ish to here. That's not an easy task. It's a fun task, maybe. Um, although, with the way they've changed threat again, I'm not sure that it would be fun. But, it's just something to consider. So, leave a comment if you want to see me really go for it and, like, sit down and make a, a hundred episode series like I did in Castile. Uh, or the Byzantines or any other series I've done. Uh, until then, join me Monday, Wednesday, Friday for my regularly scheduled uh, When the World Stopped Making Sense is Justinian's Granddaughter. And thank you for joining me. As always, La Paz.